Do we need an intro for this? I think... Okay. Hello, everyone. This is going to be our best of 2020 so far video, I guess, where we just kind of talk about some albums that we enjoyed, or maybe we didn't enjoy them. I don't know about your list. It is albums that we want to talk about. We don't necessarily yeah. have to have enjoyed them. I will say there are none on my list that I did not enjoy. Joe. Uh, okay, that's true for me, too. Okay. Okay, I was um, we the album to the table. Uh, no, I didn't. There's an album that I don't think you enjoyed, but one that I enjoyed thoroughly. It'll be interesting. We should probably explain how this works. We ordered our lists in a way where our number one choice is not going to be necessarily our favorite album, but it's going to be the album that we think is most likely to be on the other person's list. And our 15 choice is an album that we think absolutely won't be on the other person's list. Mm -hmm. And so, let's say I get my 15th choice correct, I'd get one point for that. Your number one choice, that's like worth 15 points. And then like you get progressively lower points until the 15th one is one point. Okay, I like that. It's going to be interesting, because when one of us gets one's right, we both get it right. We just get different amounts of points for it. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. Yes. We also didn't make these lists necessarily with the intent of winning or anything. No, I didn't even uh, know we were gonna we... keep on. Yeah, <laughs> I just had it's just that it's a fun fun game. Do we wanna start with our number fifteen choice? Oh, start with fifteen? Oh. Well yeah, we I go think we start with one, because one one's like the obvious ones. Like it's the obvious okay. I'm a hundred percent confident in my number one and two choice that they're on your list. I'm pretty fucking confident in my number one and two choices. Exactly. And I feel like we'd have a lot okay. of crossover here, so I want to get these ones out. Okay, first. so we're gonna go from one to fifteen. This will make the conclusion of this video very interesting for me. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. That's the way it should be. All right. Well, I'm just I'm just gonna say one because I I'm like 100 percent confident this is this is on my list and your list. The the new okay. Run the Jewels album. Okay. Cool. That's my number two. That's okay. I'm I think your number one is probably my number two. So, okay. <laughs> A point. All right. So we I gotta start adding points. up. You I get, get 14. fourteen. Uh, my number one is uh how I'm feeling now. Yeah, that's my number two. Okay. So I so. all right. <laughs> We get 15 and 14 points right off the bat. Wow. Yeah. I guess you started. We can talk about the Run the Jewels album. Okay. Yeah, this album's pretty pretty incredible. Especially coming out at a time when it did during, you know, all these protests and all the, the tension uh, that's going on right now. It's got some some of Run the Jewels' just best work ever throughout their entire discography. Yes. Um, See, great production. Killer Mike it, goes fucking off on a lot of these tracks. Carolyn Mike's verses feel really like he stamped it up for this um for this album. They're so like intense and personal, I guess, towards like everything that's going on. It came out like literally at the perfect time. Oh yeah. Um and it felt it's in, it's incredible how relevant all of the bars and verses are. It kind of was like a perfect situation for it, I guess. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. But Killer Mike has like incredible bars. His verse and walking in the snow uh is easily for me one of the best like verses maybe ever. I would say definitely um, of the year and, and maybe ever. Uh, it's so isn't it it hits home with respect to like police brutality and violence against black americans today yep. um it's present in a lot of rap music but i don't i don't know if it's really ever been hit it's very as, very poignant i don't know another verse that is hit as hard as that one has this album is just incredibly impressive i was not expecting it to be this like incredible no and i feel like so far this year there's sort of been two Two really major events. The first one is what we just talked about with the the whole uh, George Floyd and the resulting aftermath of of that unfortunate situation, and the other is quarantine. And I feel like the album that really just encapsulates quarantine so well is Charlie's "How I'm Feeling Now." Yes, which, definitely. Uh, it's an incredible, incredible project. 
I feel like her sort of self-titled album was generally well received, and I know neither of us were that impressed with it. But yeah. This album, however, I am thoroughly impressed by. I love the production approach that she takes with it. Very, very percussion heavy and hyper popish, electronic. It has like I guess a hi- almost hyperactive feel, but in a way that's also very intense. Oh yeah. And it just works incredibly well with her vocals. And also, there's a lot of lyrical content kind of about loneliness and wanting to be with other people, but not really being able to. Yeah, I definitely feel like this is, I feel like Charlie shows a lot of growth and like opening up emotions. And like these, these are like real emotions. She's feeling very down as to her current situation. And she just she seems to just want to get out, but there's no ability to. And it's really sad, but she also has this this sort of hope at the end. You can see this on the lyrics and tracks like Anthems and Visions, where after we get out of quarantine, we're going to be a better society. We're all going to, you know, have learned from this, hopefully. I don't know about that. From being well, honest. that's, uh, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> saying, Charlie's hopeful. I'm hopeful. I think it'll be good. We have this new Charlie album. It's, it's just, it slaps. So yeah, that's fair. We might this be better album- off really does slap <laughs> yeah well, well do we want to move on to the number three yeah let's let's hear it okay i have stray by bambara i also have stray by bambara. oh we did it all right <laughs> we're we're really in sync you know we're, we're just uh... in sync we're just very unique individuals we just have this very unique music taste. Uh, yeah we really do you know um <laughs> This is something that, like, I was not expecting to like so much. I thought their previous album was, like, good, personally. It's it's a solid project, but you can see the incredible growth on Stray. Yes, definitely. Bambara has a, have a pretty, like, I guess, unique style. It feels very Western is the best way I'd describe it. In my notes, I wrote Noir Cowboy. I don't know if that helps. Yeah, that's kind of... It's like... It's noir cowboy-ish, but with, like, I don't know, you take that and you kind of, like, shove in, like, daughters. Yeah. <laughs> or something. It just has this, like, manic energy to it that's, like, really captivating. And especially with- on this project, on their last project, Shadow and Everything, the songwriting was there. It was It was solid. I feel like it stepped up another notch, even on this project. And they bring in, like, backing choir and stuff like that, which adds oh, yeah. quite a bit. Because in Shadow on Everything, you really only had the lead vocalists. He was there for the entire album. And bringing in the, the backing choir and stuff like that adds, adds a lot of freshness to some of these tracks. Yeah, on songs like Stay Cruel and stuff, they, yes. show up and they add so much. The, this album is, like, insanely catchy. <laughs> it is. Um, i love yeah it's just like a really entertaining interesting project yeah okay okay uh we got number four what's number four four? uh i have 2017 to 2019 by against all logic that's my number five my number four is uh hmltd west of eden I don't have that. You don't have West of Eden. Oh, dude. Nope. <laughs> All right. Get fucked. Oh, uh, yeah. I just got. What no, is that? Twelve winning. points. I'm winning now. You got. Um. Yeah, I only, I got eleven for my against all logic. Okay. We'll talk about against all logic then. Yeah. So against all logic is, I guess, a, an alternate name for Nicholas Jar or like a. Yeah, it's just it's his side project. Name. I guess. Yeah. I guess the best way to describe it is it's... Or his previous album was, like, Straight House. Um, yeah. Like, a very... It, had, it was, like, a very, like, dark, rich-sounding house music. Uh, but it's house. Um, and yeah. this album is... Still has those house elements, but takes it in, I think, a bit more of a... Uh, abrasive... Yeah, definitely. Tone on all of the songs. I think... I think 2012 to 2017 was very, it was very approachable for people who, you know, either knew nothing about house or, or even if you were in the house genre, it was, it was very approachable. It was very easy to get into 
And this one is, it, it's a bit more experimental, definitely. And yeah. There's, back on, back on 2012, 2017, there's, there's a lot of just like catchy hooks and stuff like that and some of those mm. house staples. But here, there's not, not, not as much, definitely. It's, would you say it's less formulaic in yes, a way? that's a good way. Now that his previous album was bad, or like, the, a lot of the song structure on the previous album was, I guess, more typical house. Yeah. Whereas this kind of just goes in different directions, takes it other places. And it's just a really interesting evolution of the sound he's presented already. Exactly. Um. Because, I mean, you still have songs like uh, If Loving You Is Wrong, which are still kind of in that dark house sound. Mm -hmm. But then, like, the song after uh, With An Addict feels way more ambient and, like, it feels, I guess, more noisy in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, and it definitely distinguishes it from its previous, from his, its predecessor and uh, makes it a very interesting project for sure. Definitely. He also brings in some uh, some collaborators on this project, which I think definitely helps some of those tracks. Yeah. Very cool. Some, yeah, some cool stuff. Then we can talk about HMLTD's album. Yes, uh, West of Eden is um, a... It's a very Western-sounding I consider album. it, like, gothic... It's noir, goth rock, almost. Like glam rock. It's it's a lot of things, and it varies from song to song. There's songs that get into like hard rock. There's songs that get into trap. Like it's mm. they 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 take a wide array of uh, of influences. And this is this album's kind of odd because it's like half of these al half of these songs have been released as singles over the past like four years by HMLTD. Yeah. We see them appearing on this album, and I think they actually work quite well together. Yeah, and definitely, I think, like you said, it's kind... It feels pretty whole. Like, it, yes. despite going to all these different styles, it feels conceptually like they kind of, they, were, they thought about everything, and it feels like it works together. Definitely. It's also catchy as fuck. Yeah, so... God. Fire Some songs. songs. Satan yeah, Noella and so, I, so I good. love. Um, and also stuff like I think Loaded's like super catchy. But yeah, definitely, uh, definitely think worth checking out. It's probably not for everybody. It's, uh, it's a bit odd. Certainly a bit yeah. odd, but <laughs> it's it's mm. good. I like it a lot. All right. Well, Let's move on to number, number five. Five. My number sorry, five. It's Unlocked by Denzel Curry. It's not on my list. What the fuck? <laughs> I have another hip-hop album down the road that I, I chose over this one. Damn. But, uh, yeah, Unlocked by Denzel and Curry. Th this is his, like... What is this now? His fifth studio album? I, uh... Actually, is this even an if, album technically? I, I've been reading that it's an EP, actually. I don't think it really matters. I feel like it's, it's just, like, uh, he just considers it a it's, project, really. But. Yeah. But this has uh, some of the best production Denzel has ever been on, with Kenny Beats producing these, like, I guess, Wu-Tang-inspired yeah. beats. Um, they feel, like, modernized with Kenny's production, and it's just gorgeous denzel is fantastic on it he's a ton of energy and character and his vocals are very entertaining i will admit that he's not very focused on the album but i'm fairly okay with that because of uh it's just like really entertaining it's, um, it is extremely entertaining like i don't know, like there's hooks on these songs that are like are hard legitimately really hard to get out of your head Diet. Um, diet slaps. Diet, diet. Also, take it back. Oh, Ooh. oh man. And yeah, Denzel's performances are just super. They they range from like really laid back to like super intense and in your face, and it's fantastic. Yes, definitely. If you're a fan of Denzel or a fan of like the Wu Tang style, check it out. Oh, wow. 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 Okay, number, number six. 
six. I, t I think I took a bit of a risk with this pick, but okay. I'm kind of hoping it will pay off. My number six is the new Aronsi Pazuzu album. Oh, no. That's not my um, No, I was thinking of putting it on. I thought it was really good, but I chose against it because I didn't think you'd have heard it. Heard it. Well, no, you're not really like us. You're not super into like metal and stuff. It, so it, it like, is the only me... metal album on this list, definitely. Do I actually have a metal album on this? I don't think I do. Sure, you're supposed to be the metalhead. Come on. I'm sorry, but I also didn't think. Look, I have more important albums to put on this list, okay. uh, which you will see once we get to the end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I don't know what this is. <laughs> um, but my number six is uh, Eve Tumor. Uh, okay. Heaven to a Tortured, tortured mind. mind. That's that's not on my list. Damn, it is, it is a very solid project, though. Do you want to talk about the the uh, Oransi okay. Pazuzu album? I was kind of hoping that my metalhead friend could cover me on this one because he <laughs> knows way more about metal than I do. But um, I didn't even really consider myself a metalhead. You okay? <laughs> Compared to me, you are. Yeah, it's a very interesting, like I guess, progressive black metal. Yeah, album. there's like elements of like doom and sludge too. Yeah, um, but it has the like a lot of the songs have these great like builds that just yes. keep building and laying on like this tension until it just like comes crashing down. There's like a lot to unpack. I admittedly have not looked at the lyrics. I haven't either because I don't I feel like they don't matter as much because it's just it's really about building this sound in my opinion on this yeah. album. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this this Finnish band Arasi Pazuzu, their new album, Mestarin Kunsi, the ma also known as the Master's Claw, uh, cool metal project. All right, moving on to the Eve Tumor. Um, um, but this is like a fantastic like. Uh, the best way I guess to describe it is like it's this mix of like funk and like goth music almost. Yeah, but almost and with, like some like, glam like, rock in there almost. Yeah, there's there's elements of a lot of different things, and just like a super catchy, interesting mix of all these genres, this fusion, and I love it. It's just, it's ridiculously catchy, it's super nice well performed. Years. Yes, um, probably one of the more approachable albums we've talked about so far. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, ch check that one out. Wow. Wow. We're doing All right. real good. Number uh, seven. Okay. Uh, yeah, my you number seven. You ready? Number seven? Yeah, so my number seven is uh, Future Nostalgia by Dua Lipa. My number seven is also Future Nostalgia by Yo, Dua Lipa. Yo, we're Let's like go. totally in sync, okay? We're uh, like, oh uh, man. We're on the same wavelength, man. Okay, this is nice. nine. So nine? Yeah. Ooh, nine points. Um, But yeah, Future Nostalgia by Dua Lipa is just a banger of a pop album. It's It's easily like the best mainstream pop album that's released this year. I'd say. Yeah, definitely. It's got um, got smashing production on some of these tracks. Levitating slaps. Yes, levitating. Yeah, physical. Um, break my heart. Oof. Mm. But like they're like these eighties like dance beats almost. Yeah, it's definitely um, yeah. As the title implies, future nostalgia. You yeah, know, she's she's going back and being nostalgic for for her past pop bringing it into the future up to the now the 2020 yeah yeah but yeah this album is just like super catchy like some incredibly good hooks on these songs yeah i don't know is that i guess there's not much to talk about with this album admittedly <laughs> no i um on our on our first album dua lipa showed a lot of potential and here i feel like she's still i want her to do more Nonetheless, it's still it's still a very solid project. Yes, I personally really loved it. I think it's one of my favorite pop albums in the last few years. So yeah, yeah. Okay, number eight. Okay, I don't think uh, my pick is on your list. We're we're getting I don't to the point know. where I'm not sure if these are on your list. Probably uh, not. Yeah, I don't think this one's on your list because I think it came out too recently. <laughs> Is it the Arca album? 
It is. Okay, it is not on my list, although I do okay. very much enjoy that album. I kind of fell in love with Arca's newest album. I think like this is one of my favorite things that's come out so far this year. Wow, okay. Um, yeah. What is your choice for number eight? Oh, uh, it's the new Fiona Apple album. <laughs> Get dunked on, bitch. You put this on your list just, so, just because you <laughs> knew it was going to be on my list, Joe. I kind of did. <laughs> We can talk about Arca first. Okay, uh, this new Arca album, uh, Kick Eye, Kick is... One, I oh, is it Kick One? But yeah, this newest Arca album, I absolutely fell in love with. It's such an interesting a mix of this, like, I guess, hyper-pop sound that's been developing, but also with it's, these yeah. more, I guess almost atmospheric tracks like there's afterwards with bjork which sounds closer to like a bjork song but with more like noisy production and you just have like bangers on here like watch uh with featuring shy girl um yes check out shy girl. and it's just such a weird and interesting mix of all of these like sounds and everything and i just like absolutely fell in love with it it is a very cool, a very unique album, and it's definitely interesting to see the new direction that Arca is going in. And there, there are some, there are definitely some bangers off of this album. The the Rosalia track, fucking I love yeah. That song. Uh, Fiona Apple. Now let's let's go. So I love this Fiona Apple album. It is. <sighs> you got something to say, Joe? <laughs> Is a pretty good album. <laughs> it is a pretty good album. Um, there, there is such strength that Fiona Apple shows on this album. She has in it, like her songwriting has been incredible. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you see, this is where we get into conflict because Brendan is a pitchfork stand and I'm a needle drop stand. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so naturally, he thinks to the ten, and I think it's a strong seven. So. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I do really love, I really enjoy this album, the Fiona Apple record. Um, I think it's a very interesting, lyrically, there's so much, it's so emotionally raw, um, so much of the time. Um, and it's very intense at points. I do, I'm gonna, alright, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna say some of the production I don't enjoy that much. Or well, it's not the production, but the instrumental uh the i guess there's the instrumentals which i think are sometimes a bit too sparse they need more but i still think this album's absolutely worth checking out don't take my dumbass word for it <laughs> yeah i'm gonna say Go. you're wrong with the production because the production is perfect the 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 percussion heavy production which it, it perfectly accentuates what Fiona Apple is is saying and sort of her her very defiant attitude on a lot of these tracks. Mm. And there there are times like the opener where she's she's wanting love, and a percussion works there. There's times where she's she's wanting to fight, and the percussion works there. And I just I can't I can't really see any problems with it. It's, beautiful wow wow okay do we want to go to number nine number nine all right I, you said you had another hip-hop album yes so i'm wondering if it's this one uh mine is the quelly chris and chris keys album innocent I, country 2 yes this is number also nine. my number nine album yo we like we a little bit in sync all right yeah 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 each get, each get seven for that yeah. Um, um, this is a very like rich hip hop album. I guess is how I'd describe it. It has this like fantastic, what's the word? Like it has the fantastic like jazzy instrumentals. I definitely think it leads to one of the most like engaging hip hop albums of the past year. Yeah, I agree. Quelly Chris is an artist who's like. He's come out with fantastic albums year after year for many years now. 
and this yeah. is this is another one in that line. The the production teaming up with with Chris Keys on that note was you know it's it's incredible. I I implore you to like just listen to the first three tracks and then try and put it down after that because they're so engaging. Production is so beautiful. On them. yeah, and also uh, Quale himself is a he's a fantastic rapper. He's a very like nasally voice i guess is the best way to describe it yeah a very unique voice and often and that leads to such an interesting it leads to much more interesting engaging verses from him in general i think with him being just such a different sounding artist than uh some other rappers and he definitely he approaches a lot of very important topics he approaches police brutality and systemic racism and yeah. a lot of other things on this album. And he also has... There's there's a fantastic feature list throughout the album. Yes, there are a ton of features on this album. Um, you have people like Earl Sweatshirt, Billy Woods is on a track. Mm-hmm. I don't recommend... I don't recognize the other artists that are featured, so... <laughs> the only one I want to show is Pink Sifu. I think he his features on this, on this album work incredibly well. Moving on to our number and 10 pick. I don't think any of the rest of these albums are on your list. Okay, what is yours? My number 10 is the new Horror Numeri album, Love Theism. That is not on my yeah, list. Thank you. My number 10 pick is uh, it is Song for Our Daughter by Laura Marling. Okay. Do you want to go over Horror Numeri's? Okay. Um, Horror Numeri, this album is pretty much entirely in Japanese. There are some English hooks that are, are quite catchy, I will say, but uh, just like warning on that front. It is a mix of J-pop, J-rock, J-rap, electronic music, other things. She has, she has a very um, very mixed style, and she, she incorporates a lot of different genres into her music, and it turns out really well. It turns into some very catchy and fun music. And there's there's actually quite a few I'd say more punky tracks on this mini album than on her, her previous works as well. Uh, I feel like it's just like a very it's a very solid project. Very fun to listen to. It is it is decently short being a mini album. But there's just a lot of really great tracks there. And Hara Murray, I like her. I good artist. Okay. Thank you. I will fully admit to not listening through the entire thing. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've listened to It's a Song for Our da- Daughter, Joe. Come on. Dude, I'm sorry. I listened to like two songs and I was like, yeah, it's Haru no Murray. It does. I'm if not... you weren't that impressed with um, uh, Haru Tashura, which came mm-hmm. out in 2018, I don't. I would not expect this album to, to really leave an impression. I still really like uh, Haru oh. Haru Let me wait. Toshura. Haru t- t- Toshura. All right. That was still, I still butchered <laughs> that pronunciation. Um, I still, I really like that album. I don't know. It's just, I'll this... probably give Love Theism a, an actual listen through. Um, but Song for Our Daughter by Laura Marling, I think is just a very gorgeous, like, folk album. It's, it's kind of a mix of, like, folk and country almost That's with it. instrumentation. Um, and just feels very natural and gorgeous with a lot of like layered instrumentation and stuff y- yeah i think there's a really great album wow i haven't listened to it in a while so i'll admit that i'm not i don't have it's not fresh on the mind but it is, ch- it is check out nice, album very sweet album yes uh what what's the what's your number 11 brendan my number 11 is this new horse lords album the common task my number 11, I, that is not on my list. Yeah, uh, I figured. <laughs> but I, my number 11 is uh, Set My Heart on Fire Immediately by Perfume Genius. Okay, yeah. Is that on your list or no? It's not on my list, although okay, I figured. it is a nice album. Yeah, do we want to start with the Horse Lords album? Okay, um, Horse Lords are an experimental rock group. They they remind me a lot of Battles, if you know about Battles, um, with a sort of odder sounds they bring into the mix where they kind of have sort of these bubbly sounds at points and Mm. 
but very odd, odd compositions. And this this album is compu compositionally very intense. There's five songs. It's 40 minutes. There's one track that's like 16 minutes long. So if that's really not your thing, this album is probably not your thing. However, if you if you're if you're willing to, to sit down and give it a listen, I feel like it's it's very rewarding because, you know, I feel like it's a, it's a very interesting sounding album, definitely. That is a very interesting sounding album. It wasn't one that personally grabbed me that much, but I can definitely see why people really like it. We got the Perfume Genius album. Wow. Wow, set my heart, heart on fire immediately. Uh, I really love this album. I think it's just a very gorgeous, uh, just like interesting mix of sounds. With Perfume Genius's his vocals are just incredibly like sensual, I guess, is the best way to describe them. They're really fantastic and beautiful. And it's a very raw album emotionally. Him talking a lot about his uh, relationships and his sexuality and stuff. And I just find it to be a very gorgeous album. Are we good? We're moving on to number 12. Yes, we are. <laughs> My number 12 choice is uh, Miss Columbia by L Lido Pimienta. Okay. Uh, my number 12 choice is Regresa by Busca Baya. Okay. So very, definitely different albums. D different albums. Uh, both Spanish, though. Yes. Can I can talk first. Oh, yes. Okay. So Regresa, Regresa is a pretty short album. It's like 31 minutes. 10 tracks. The, the lyrics... And vocals are entirely in Spanish, and I will also admit to not having <laughs> translated them from the rudimentary Spanish I know. They they tend to be they're they're mostly about love and searching for someone, and you can definitely feel this on on tracks like Club Tuyo. What really makes this album for me is is two things. One, it's incredibly catchy. Uh, Busca Baya's hooks are just so so well done, and really really earwormy but also the the production on this album it has this very i don't know why but it's sort of i don't know how, uh, how to like describe it because like normally like you think of you think of more more traditionally uh spanish music and you think like flamenco and stuff like that but this is very very toned down not not like lo-fi but it's it, it sort of it it sits in the back of the room. It, it just keeps going, and it's it's very interesting and well done. It gives the album a vibe that I don't really find anywhere else, except for like Radiohead, which is really odd. But <laughs> it's it's not like Radiohead, but it reminds <laughs> me of Radiohead. You know, I considering you said most of them were about most of the songs are about love i don't i mean i guess there's radiohead songs about love but they're just really depressing songs Dude. about love you're forgetting the best radiohead song though uh it's a little song called creep oh love. yes creep i mean technically it is about love but just I like i don't know if i would call sort of. love i mean like kind of it's like he wants people to notice him but he's a creep you know <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know. I I think I do know actually. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this uh, Lido Pimienta album, Miss Colombia, is re a really interesting blend of like more traditional like Latin American music, but also you have very interesting modern production choices over it, and like. There's a lot of different sounds that are played with this on this album uh, that contribute a ton to it being just super interesting and weird um, in a lot of ways. Lido Pimienta's like her vocals are incredible on this album. They're uh, very gorgeous, and I also have not translated any of these um, songs, so I can't promise. You know, maybe it's about you know, being a Nazi or something, <laughs> but I don't think that's what it's about. So <laughs> wait, let's see if I can determine. I mean, there's a song called coming through. All right. That's, that's not, you know, it's about being a Nazi. What? I don't know. No, but I, I can read the title. Oh, like I understand the title, uh, but it, a lot of these songs also give me kind of like a, 
a similar vibe to like Bjork or something. Damn it, I thought you were um, gonna say Radiohead. Oh, uh, you know they give me a similar vibe to Radiohead, especially <laughs> the song "Creep." Um, that song especially, but like the way she uses her vocals and the way they kind of blend with a lot of the instrumentation to me reminds me quite a bit of Bjork. Um, but yeah, I think this album is fantastic. Super interesting, super colorful sounding. Um, you know, you have like steel drum in it and horns all over it, and it's just really fantastic. Now we're on to number 13. We're at the point where I don't think, like, I think there's zero chance that I my next three on your chance. list. I highly doubt you've even heard of these next three albums. Okay. So, yeah, let's I know you've, you've probably heard of these three next three for me. Okay. There's just no chance they're on your list. Uh, I'll, I'll start off with my my 13. Mine is this new Recovery Girl EP by producer Galen Tipton under the new side project name of right. Recovery, Recovery Girl. What, what do wow. you got? I, oh, uh, mine is After Hours by The Weeknd. Okay, I have heard of that. I, I think I've heard I, of The once or you twice. Know. Might have been mentioned to me. It maybe you know maybe. he's you know he's like a small up and comer. He only has like sixty million monthly listeners on Spotify. Wow. Let me let me yeah. see how much Recovery Girl has. All right, how much did you say? Sixty million. Yeah. Yeah. Well, six thousand five hundred fifty-three, maybe. All right. So the the weekend's getting up there. You know, <laughs> he's 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 going. He's nearing Recovery Girl. You know. Yeah. Almost. Almost there. <laughs> uh, you want to talk about the way more popular album? Sure. Sure. Uh, After Hours by the Weekend, I think, is a very good, in- engaging album. I admittedly haven't listened to that much of his previous stuff. I've listened to like a bit of his like first three uh, mixtapes that have come out, and there's of course singles that I've heard. But this is like I guess is my first like dive into his uh, more mainstream releases. I think it's very good. Uh, it's a very catchy, cerebral mix, I guess, with these 80 synths all over it on this project. And I think it leads to a very engaging, entertaining, like, pop album. Sort sort of pop album. Um, I guess, like, a, almost a mix of pop and R&B in some ways. Um, but there's some like really fantastic songs like After Hours on here. I love. Super fucking catchy. Very good album. Wow, thank you. Um, You're welcome. My the the Recover Girl EP is is kind of the opposite of that. This this fucking goes hard as shit. Like <laughs> this is in your face from the moment it begins, with the opener big, loud, and violent. So that's what you're getting into. It's I definitely I definitely classify this this EP under uh, the the hyper pop genre. Oh, that's a bit vague because it, it definitely has a lot of sounds of hyper pop uh, with the the pitch shifted vocals and the the fast paced production. Uh, there there's a lot going on here. There are points where it, it's a very it's a very emotionally open album, and it's kind of interesting to see that as it comes under. Uh, a different name for for producer Galen Tipton's, you know, usual stuff, but Galen Tipton seems to be sort of taking on this this character of Recovery Girl, and they're just talking, singing, screaming at points about some some very interesting topics: love, relationships, being being trans, being people being transphobic. Can I just mention this amazing song title? Uh, that girl is that my girl world. You transphobic music. piece of shit. Yes. Oh man, <laughs> so fun. Also, let's go, bitch. Slaps. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's generally centered around this relationship. It, this is short. It's seventeen minutes, six tracks. So you don't you don't quite get the whole picture, but there does seem to be a theme here, and you you sort of get to peek in certain aspects of just this relationship and the emotions that are going on there. I, I know I've been talking about it like it's a very serious project. It's, in a ways it is, but I feel like that's because I've just listened to this so much and I'm so invested in it. On the surface, it is just a very fun, fast-paced, 
really hyper pop project, but just it goes hard. It has some very very unique production that I love, and it, it is it, it's it's fun on the surface definitely, and I would I would highly recommend it. It's it came out in like the first week of 2020, and I cannot stop listening to it. It's so catchy, so fun, love it. All right, number fourteen. Let's go. Number fourteen. Okay, my number fourteen is uh, "Ghosts V uh, Together" by Nine Inch Nails. Okay, um, haven't even listened to that project, but my number fourteen is this new false noise album, "Floral Strobe." Okay, I've definitely not heard of that. <laughs> it's Nine Inch Nails project. I there's this was released as like. Or they released two albums slash I don't want to call it a mixtape projects I guess there is Ghosts Four Locusts and Ghosts uh, Five together um, and I personally prefer Together a decent bit to Locusts because both of these are ambient albums which I guess might seem kind of weird for Nine Inch Nails but I feel like that it works very well on these projects um, and I think Locusts there's less that happens, I guess, on it with Amy. The, a lot of the strong songs on Locust are, I guess, more or longer, whereas on Ghost V, um, there's, I guess, more personally that I find intriguing about it. A lot of these songs, despite being ambient, have some very interesting other elements to them, like the closer still right here, which has kind of build towards the middle and then breaks out this like i guess intense like techno beat almost it's not really techno it's a bit more industrial but just a very engaging interesting ambient project that i really enjoyed cool this this new this new false noise record floral strobe that like nobody's heard of i find this project quite unique i i feel like i'm very fortunate to have stumbled upon it it is at its core, I would call it drum and bass. That being said, uh, I don't even feel like that fits. There is so many different uh, different sounds going on here. There's there's you know just noise elements of noise, vaporwave, glitch, chill wave, among other things. You, it's there. There's a lot here, and this this um, producer false noise brings a lot of these together. And create some very, very intensely composition tracks. It's a song collapse theme on this album that's like seven and a half minutes long. I I love it so much. It is so unique. It has so it's a lot of these songs. What I love about them is that they're so textured. I I, I would have trouble finding I would say an album that to me feels as textured as this album does. It is just incredibly. Incredibly well produced. Wow. I think it's a really, really interesting project. Very unique. All right, I'm really excited because we're on to number fifteen. I don't know what your number right. fifteen is. Why have you been hyping it up so much? Um, because my number fifteen is Manic by Halsey. <laughs> I should have seen this coming. <laughs> um, all right, look, this album isn't really great or anything. Um, I think it's a very it's an enjoyable pop album, and it has Without Me on it, which I love. I think it's an absolute banger of a song. I fucking love it. Um, I haven't even let you go yet to say what your number 15 no, totally is. Fine. I don't care. Talk about I'm going. But, like, look, I'm totally... All right, I'm only a little bit biased towards Halsey. I don't think I... She's not, like, a great artist or anything, but, like, I thoroughly enjoyed Manic. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it has without me, which is a fucking banger. I love that song. Yeah. What's your fifteen, Brendan? My fifteen is "Here Come the Baton" by Stice. Again, nobody's ever heard of this artist. You know, like Halsey. Nobody's ever heard of How, Halsey. Beat. Yeah, no one's heard of Halsey. Don't you know? How do you spell Stice? S T I C E. Ah, okay. This is this is definitely the rarest pick. Three hundred seven monthly listeners on Spotify. Oh um, fuck! All right, fucking hipster virgin. Yeah, this <laughs> version coming at you live. Not actually, we're not. The I think the best way to describe Stice's music is gross, which I know doesn't sound like a positive thing, but 
Okay, okay. It's like... I've, I've heard Stice described as a mix between Death Grips and Gorilla Toss, which I think is wrong, but I think they're headed in the right direction there. Um, Stice is like... Uh, it's, it's extremely unique. I've never heard another artist like Stice. The closest you get is probably Gorilla Toss. However, Gorilla Toss is, is decently approachable. Especially their later stuff. Their later stuff is very approachable. Their earlier stuff, not so much. Stice is just this... They're just, they're just screaming about vomit and drug overdosing and organs and lots of things over these really uh, odd beats and I don't know it's just like I like it a lot it's it's catchy like you know what it kind of I've just listened to a couple of things just yeah. like quickly it sort of reminds me of like an albatross okay or something like that this kind of like noisy I don't really know how to describe it you, you see, you see my trouble here. How? Like, yeah. This is extremely niche. It is extremely. This is niche. very weird. Um. Yeah, Stice is, is an incredibly interesting artist, and that's that's part of the reason I want to talk about them. Is they're so they're so unique and they're so in this one niche, and I feel like they they deserve more attention because I I do think like here the Come the Baton is like actually a really really good project. I can't say I would put it on at a party, but like. You know, it's like 3 a.m. on a Saturday. Don't and just pass like... the ox cord to Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it, it's something. I, I actually would probably describe it almost... If I could add one more band into this mix of Death Grips and Gorilla Toss, I'd also add in, like, Daughters or something. Okay. I it's just like... <laughs> I see where you're coming from. I would not go in that direction. But yeah, I, okay. see, I see what you're saying. Okay. It's, um, but yeah. Yeah. That's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I choose stuff that's so niche and hard to describe? Could have just chosen uh, the weekend. You've been happy. <laughs> wow. All right, do we get to add up points? I guess we add up points now. I'm pretty sure you won because you beat We got to wait, I got to add this up, all right? I got to okay, do Okay. The calculation. Oh man. What are we Yo, doing? okay. You may have won in terms of points. Did you get I 69? I, I got 69. Fuck. Damn it, I got 70. <laughs> I'm the real winner here. Damn. Well, Brendan won. <laughs> Fuck, man. Damn it! Wow. But yeah, this this has oh. been it's been the boff stop. This has and been yeah. Me these are, and these are fifteen albums from each of us that we think are worth checking out. Yeah, twenty twenty. Give I, them a listen. Is there one album in particular in particular on this list that you would encourage people to listen to over the others if they can only listen to like one of them? If if I had to recommend a single album off of this list for just the anybody who's listening, I think it would be the Charlie album. It's definitely a good choice. If you haven't heard the Charlie uh, Charlie album, go listen to it. I do also want to emphasize the Arca album because I think, for me personally, the Arca album was like, I it was I guess it was very surprising to me. I'm not too familiar with Arca's previous stuff, but it didn't. It was just such an interesting project to me that i mean it's getting a lot of attention already i guess but yeah i definitely think i i totally said um, that i think the new arc project is quite quite impressive and definitely i think arca's best work probably since like stretch two um yeah if you know the old old arca uh so yeah check it out yeah all right this has been uh the bomb stop these are you know there's some albums we really like have a good day.